Hello, fourth grade scientists. Today we are talking even more about plant structures and their functions. We brought it up a little bit on Monday. You read all about it by yourself on Wednesday, and now you're diving even deeper. So structures. Plants and animals have internal things inside that we can't see with just our eye and external or those things that we can see structures that function to support survival, growth, behavior, and reproduction. In other words, plants and animals have structures that help them live. Today, we're gonna continue to focus just on plants. I know in science lab, you did your water birds activity, which focused on animal structures that help them survive. Today, we're gonna be looking at plant structures, both internal, like these uh, plant cells, that have chlorophyll in them, which help in making food, and external structures like this Venus flytrap with its special structures here, and this flower that almost looks like it has smaller flowers growing inside of it. On the next slide, I'm gonna sort some pictures into structure, uh, in pictures of structures into different categories. And I want you to see if you can determine which category shows structures that support growth, reproduction, survival, and behavior. So I'm gonna move some pictures around, kind of talk about them. When it's all sorted, I'm gonna ask you to pause and see if you can figure out what each category is. So here we go. We have all these pictures mixed up at the bottom, another tree diagram showing that I'm looking at plant structures. We're gonna have four categories, but those categories have not been identified yet. You know that they're gonna end up being, uh, what did I say? Growth reproduction, survival, and behavior, but I'm gonna sort the pictures and you have to decide the category heading. So let's see, I'm gonna start off with this one. These are some shallow roots. We know what roots do, but I wonder why they say specifically shallow roots. It looks like this plant is growing on some rock. That's an interesting, that's an interesting structure and an interesting looking plant. So that one's gonna go here in this category. Oh, uh, what else have I got here? Oh, I have a stem. Well, stems and roots tend to go together, but this one I'm gonna put here under a different category. I have my stem. You all learned even more about stems on Wednesday on your own. Then let's see, I'm gonna dig around. Oop, yellow is my favorite color. So I have this picture, which shows the pistil. And as you all learned on Wednesday, if you didn't already know it, the pistil is part of the female part of the flower, and it actually collects the pollen, pollen that goes down into the ovary to make new seeds. All right, let's keep going. Oh, here, I'm gonna move this one because this one actually goes into its own category right here. This is an interesting one. The picture says it is plant cells with auxin. And auxin is a chemical found inside plant cells that makes their structure move and react to stimuli. So we're gonna add two things specifically, examples of what auxin does to a plant. So let me move some stuff out of the way. Here's our first one. Auxin leads to tropism. Plants experience tropism when they react to an external stimuli. They react to something going on in their environment. And in this picture, you see that we have a jar, there's some little plants growing, and they are growing, growing in a certain direction. They are searching for something. They are leaning towards the light. So this is an example of phototropism, although there are other types of tropism as well. Then the other thing that auxin might cause in plants is, where did it go? Oh, here it is. Let me move some of these things around. Is abscission. And abscission is what happens when a plant lo loses dead parts of itself. So when those dead parts fall off. In this case, we see a tree that is bare with all these dead leaves around it. So plant cells that have auxin lead to tropism and abscission. So I have a feeling you might guess this category, but just hold on, we're not done sorting yet. Let me think, let me think. <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna take this one out from behind all the pictures, and this one goes over here. Now I know what you're thinking, it's covered in spines, but that, my friends, is not what we're looking at. The, the label here 
is the barrel shape. A lot of plants we know have these stems and they grow tall like the trees, but this plant right here has a special structure and it is its shape, this barrel shape. Let's see, I can bring, oh, this one's already right next to its category. <clears throat> we see that it's colorful flower petals. We learned more about flower petals on Wednesday and what they do. Let's keep going here. Oh, leaves are gonna go right here with our stem. Some of our basic plant structures that we know what they do. Leaves, if you remember, are the place where food gets made. Um, let's see, fuzzy hairs. Look at these flowers. Look how silly they look with their fuzzy hairs. They go into this category. Then we've got chlorophyll. I don't know if you know what chlorophyll does, but it lives inside leaves, which it makes sense. They're grouped together, and it's where photosynthesis actually takes place. That just leaves this friend hiding behind. It's going to go right over here, and we're looking at seeds. You all know what seeds do. You know why plants need them, and I bet you could find them if you looked inside a plant. So our pictures are now sorted. We have shallow roots, barrel shape, and fuzzy hairs in this category stem, leaves, and chlorophyll in this category, plant cells with auxin, which leads to abscission and tropism in this category, and finally, the pistil, colorful flower petals and seeds in this category. Pause the video and see if you can decide which heading goes for each category. You can write it in your notebook, you can turn and talk to someone at home, you can pause and think to yourself, but I want you to pause and see if you can come up with each category that belongs for the, each group of pictures. All right, friends, if you have unpaused and you are still watching, that means you are ready for the final answer. Do you know which group is our survival group? How about our behavior group? Reproduction, growth, here it is. Did you get it right? Our shallow roots, barrel shape, and fuzzy hairs are structures that can help plants survive. Stems, leaves, and chlorophyll help with plant growth. I had a feeling once I talked about abscission and tropism that you might understand that auxin affects a plant's behavior. And with all the reading we did on Wednesday, the pistil, the colorful flower petals, and the seeds should have been easy to identify as supporting a plant's reproduction. Want even more examples? Here's even more pictures of plant structures. Can you figure out which function these different structures maybe support? Which of these support growth, survival, reproduction, behavior? You can pause, think to yourself, chat with someone at home when you are inspired and you are ready for your independent activity. You may play the video again and I will explain what it is you're doing to show what you know. All right, so my friends, on your own to show what you know about plant structures, you're gonna do a deep dive. You're gonna choose a function and dive a little deeper. You can do this two ways. You can choose a function that plant structures support. You can think I wanna learn more about growth or reproduction or survival or behavior. Or you can think about a special plant structure that you know about and then match it to its function. So choose a function, identify a special plant structure that supports your chosen function. So if we look back at our sort, maybe you're interested in survival. Well, three examples we talked about were shallow roots, barrel shape, and fuzzy hairs. Your turn, now I want you to come up with another special plant structure that would support survival. Then using what you know, or looking up information online, prove with evidence that the, that that structure supports the function. What does that mean? Well, what I mean is I wanna know how do you know that shallow roots support survival? What is the evidence showing that shallow roots support survival or whatever it is you choose to do? Once you've chosen a function, you've identified a special structure, and you've figured out how to prove it, you will post your findings to the Padlet linked under the lesson on our Google Classroom. And my friends, I've done one for you. So if you go to that um, Padlet, you'll see it's called Plant Structures and Functions. 
There is a column for survival, a column for growth, and a column for behavior, and a column for reproduction. I did one for reproduction. You will title it whatever your structure is. For example, I did bright and colorful petals. Add a picture, any picture you can find. I'm sure you all are quite experienced with Padlet, but it was super easy to do. And then of course, two or three sentences proving how bright and colorful petals support reproduction. I said flowers have bright petals to attract pollinators. Pollinators move pollen from the stamen to the pistil, which is needed to produce seeds. Seeds then grow into new plants, so bright petals help a plant reproduce. That's it. If you are up to the challenge and you have the time, see if you can come up with a structure for each of the four functions. I want at least one, but if you are up to it and you have the time, do one for each, do one for two, do one for three, whatever you feel up to beyond the one you must do. All right, scientists, go ahead, dive deep. I can't wait to read your postings. Excellent work.